for the first time in centuries, researchers have uncovered what's believed to be Jesus' tomb. Workmen uncovering the marble slab over the tomb. After centuries of relentless exploration across various regions, scientists have at last unearthed evidence that validates the location of Jesus' burial site. Deep within this tomb lies a trove of invaluable knowledge, offering insights into age-old enigmas that have confounded generations. Where was this tomb situated, and what secrets of profound significance were concealed within its depths? Did they, perhaps, stumble upon the remains of Jesus himself? Join us as we delve into the mysteries held within Jesus' tomb and explore their potential impact on our beliefs. Recently, a team of researchers made a remarkable breakthrough at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, situated in the heart of Jerusalem. This church has long been a revered destination for Christians worldwide, beckoning pilgrims to its sacred grounds for centuries. According to accounts in the New Testament, Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, commonly referred to as the Place of the Skull. This site, believed to have been an ancient stone quarry beyond the city walls, carries immense significance in Christian lore. Approximately 10 years following Jesus' crucifixion, a new wall was erected, enclosing the area where he was both crucified and laid to rest within the confines of Jerusalem. Thus, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre now stands within the bounds of the Old City. Emperor Constantine Bremfern, a devout Christian, issued orders for the demolition of a temple dedicated to Venus in Jerusalem to make way for the construction of a church. During this process, workers unearthed a tomb purported to be that of Jesus, buried beneath the layers of history. When pilgrims made their way to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, their journey began with a climb up a staircase from Jerusalem's main thoroughfare, the Cardo. Along the way, they traversed through several sections, including a narthex, a basilica, and a sacred garden where the prominent rock of Golgotha stood before finally arriving at the Holy Sepulchre itself. Initially, the tomb carved into the rock was exposed to the elements, but later, a small building was erected to shelter it. The entire complex was lavishly adorned, as noted by Eusebius of Caesarea, a biographer of Constantine and depicted in early 5th century artworks in Rome and on the Madaba mosaic map from the 6th century. Modern excavations have further illuminated its opulent decorations. In the year 326, St. Helena, the mother of Constantine, embarked on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Legend has it that during her journey, she serendipitously discovered what was believed to be the cross upon which Jesus was crucified known as the True Cross. The tale of the True Cross's finding became widely circulated by the early 5th century. By the 11th century, a cave beneath the basilica's ruins gained renown as the chapel of the invention of the cross. In 614, tragedy struck when a Persian army leveled the church to the ground and seized the True Cross. However, in 631, the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius successfully negotiated its return. Following the Arab conquest in 638, life for Christians in Jerusalem initially remained relatively peaceful, characterized by tolerance. However, three centuries later, changes ensued as the basilica's entrance was converted into a mosque. Then. In 966, a catastrophic fire sparked during anti-Christian protests engulfed the structure's dome. In 1009, the church's destruction was ordered by the zealous Fatimid Caliph al-Hakim. However, Emperor Constantine IX the Monomachus of the Byzantine Empire generously funded its reconstruction, albeit with changes to its design, notably a new entrance on the southern side. This renovated church attracted pilgrims from all corners of Christendom in the latter part of the 11th century. Interestingly, during much of this period, Muslim rulers in Jerusalem treated these pilgrims with kindness and respect. It wasn't until the Seljuk Turks seized control of Jerusalem in 1077 that rumors began circulating about mistreatment of Christian pilgrims and their denial of entry to the church. The longing to reclaim sacred sites particularly the Holy Sepulchre, played a pivotal role in motivating the First Crusade, which occurred between 1096 
and 1099. Following the Crusaders' capture of Jerusalem in 1099, eyewitnesses recounted how surviving pilgrims prayed in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, despite its lack of a roof at the time. Over the ensuing 50 years, the Church of Constantine Nyfeth Monomachos underwent extensive reconstruction. While retaining its original layout, it was converted into a cathedral following the style of Western churches. The garden surrounding the church became the Crusaders Basilica and a separate chapel was dedicated to the Rock of Golgotha. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was rededicated on July 15, 1149, precisely 50 years after the First Crusade captured Jerusalem. However, construction work continued for several years thereafter. Nevertheless, the church bears a strong resemblance to what visitors see today. With the influx of pilgrims, measures were implemented to regulate entry and movement within the church, as evidenced by the twin doorways that remain visible today. Elaborately carved lintels, once traversed by pilgrims, were relocated to the Rockefeller Museum in Jerusalem following an earthquake in 1927. After the Muslim reconquest of the city in 1187, one of the entrances to the church was sealed off. Despite periods of Muslim rule, pilgrims were still permitted to visit the site and Western leaders pursued negotiations to secure access rights. This continued for many years until archaeologists made an unexpected discovery, revealing Jesus' burial site. Inside the tomb, they unearthed something remarkable. Ancient mortar beneath the stone where Jesus is believed to have been laid to rest. This mortar dates back to the era of Emperor Constantine's rule over the Roman Empire. This recent discovery serves to affirm the long-standing narratives passed down through generations concerning the site believed to be Jesus' burial place. Looking back into history, we encounter Constantine, the Roman emperor renowned for embracing Christianity. Legend recounts his endeavor alongside his mother Helena to unearth the revered tomb of Jesus, a pivotal figure in Christian faith, around the years 325 to 326 AD. Motivated by a divine calling, Constantine embarked on a quest to locate the sacred resting place of Jesus, ultimately leading them to Jerusalem where they believed the tomb lay. Their journey brought them to an ancient Roman temple possibly dedicated to Venus, the goddess of love, marking a crucial juncture in their pursuit. The ancient Roman temple, a timeless structure steeped in history, became the focal point of their exploration as they endeavored to unveil the secrets concealed within its walls. Through meticulous excavation, the temple underwent a profound metamorphosis, shedding its centuries-old facade to reveal the hidden tomb nestled within its ancient stones. As layers of history were peeled away, a tomb delicately carved from the rugged contours of a limestone cave was unearthed. The moment the tomb's interior was revealed marked a significant milestone in history, as the natural cave, now revered as a sacred space, was opened up to expose its sacred confines. This monumental discovery led to the construction of the Edicule, a protective structure erected around the sacred space, safeguarding the essence of the divine revelation. The saga of Constantine's pursuit and the subsequent revelation of the tomb beneath the Roman temple epitomizes the intricate interplay between history, faith, and the quest for sacred relics. It is a narrative deeply woven into Christian consciousness, blending temporal and spiritual dimensions into a profoundly meaningful account. Within the sacred confines of the tomb, believed to cradle the remains of Jesus Christ, one element stands out, the presence of a long shelf often referred to as a burial bed. According to tradition, it was upon this shelf that the body of Jesus was tenderly laid after the crucifixion, prompting reflection on the profound theological significance of that pivotal moment in Christian history. Delving into the intricate features of the tomb, we unearth a captivating revelation, a striking resemblance to the tombs of affluent Jews residing in Jerusalem during the first century. These tombs, meticulously carved from durable limestone caves, often boasted shelves and niches, indicative of a shared cultural understanding of honoring the departed with utmost reverence. 
The burial bed transcends mere physicality. It embodies profound symbolism intertwined with Christianity's spiritual narrative, signifying the ultimate resting place and silently bearing witness to momentous events. As we scrutinize the intricately etched details on the limestone, we feel a profound resonance with the rich tapestry of Christian beliefs. A layer of history unfurls as we examine the marble adorning the burial bed. This marble, believed to have been meticulously placed no later than 1555, speaks volumes about the passage of time. Yet, historical indications suggest its presence may extend even further back, possibly tracing its origins to the mid-1300s. Across history, pilgrims' accounts reverberate through the ages, offering invaluable insights into the layers of time and enriching our comprehension of the sanctity enshrined within. Every chisel mark on the marble and every contour of the burial bed carries the whispers of bygone eras, bridging ancient epochs with the present through the reverence exhibited by pilgrims and adherents. The tomb, with its distinctive attributes, transcends mere physical space, evolving into a vessel carrying centuries of devotion and introspection. It beckons all who approach to connect with a narrative forever etched in stone. Now, let's delve into the scientific revelations concerning the mortar discovered within Jesus' tomb. Unveiling Astonishing Ancient Discoveries under the leadership of Chief Scientific Supervisor Antonia Maropolo, a team of scientists conducted a thorough analysis of mortar samples extracted from various points within the edicule, the protective enclosure surrounding the tomb. What they unearthed sent shockwaves across the globe. The mortar, a relic steeped in architectural history, became the focal point of their inquiry. Utilizing radiocarbon dating techniques on samples obtained from different locations within the edicule, they embarked on a quest to unveil the ancient mysteries concealed within the mortar. The recent findings from their analyses shed new light on the timeline of the edicule's construction. The revelation that the lower slab, a pivotal component of the revered structure, likely underwent cementing during the mid-4th century, adds another layer of historical significance to this revered monument. Associating this construction phase with the era of Emperor Constantine introduces a crucial dimension to the narrative, connecting the inception of the edicule with the influence of a prominent historical figure. The confirmation of Constantine's role in the construction of the Edicule holds profound significance for scholars and historians dedicated to unraveling the enigmatic history of this sacred site. The time frame of the mid-4th century offers a window into the past, bridging the architectural evolution of the Edicule with the broader context of the Roman Empire's history. As the findings emerge, they bring a sense of gratification to those engaged in the study of this sacred monument with the dating of the Edicule's lower slab serving as tangible evidence of the ongoing pursuit of historical truth. Once silent witnesses to ancient craftsmanship, the mortar samples now divulge insights that enrich our comprehension of Emperor Constantine's journey and the individuals instrumental in shaping the sanctified enclave of Jesus' tomb. Scientists employed an advanced technique known as optically stimulated luminescence OSL, to date the sacred mortar samples extracted from the edicule, enabling them to ascertain the last exposure of quartz sediment crucial to the mortar to light. This method holds significance as it accurately unveils temporal details. The mortar samples underwent meticulous analysis at two independent laboratories, each contributing to the collective quest for clarity regarding the timeline. Through OSL, researchers aimed to unlock the historical nuances embedded within the quartz sediment. By examining the sediment's light exposure history, they gleaned insights into the periods of alteration undergone by the mortar. Questions arose regarding the accuracy of the rebuilt church in faithfully representing the sacred ground identified by a delegation from Rome 17 centuries earlier. Despite these uncertainties, the church endures as a symbol of Jerusalem's enduring spirit, 
beckoning contemplation and exploration into the intricate narratives of faith and historical authenticity. As researchers meticulously analyzed mortar samples extracted from the remnants of the southern wall of the cave, they embarked on reconstructing a historical timeline. Dating these samples to the years 335 and 1570 established a connection between construction efforts dating back to the Roman era and a documented restoration project in the 16th century. These traces of mortar, preserved within the framework of the edicule, serve as tangible evidence of the enduring historical legacy enshrined within this sacred site. The southern wall, having borne witness to centuries of transformation, unveiled indications of construction activities from the Roman era, reaffirming the narrative of the edicule's evolutionary journey. Through meticulous scientific scrutiny, guided by precise dating methodologies, researchers succeeded in deciphering the chronological imprints left behind by various builders and renovators. A significant revelation unfolded during the examination of the mortar extracted from the tomb entrance, which bore the hallmark of the 11th century. This alignment with a pivotal period in the Edicule's history, the painstaking reconstruction efforts following its devastation in 1009, underscores the resilience of those devoted to safeguarding this sacred sanctuary. The findings underscore the dedication of individuals who, over centuries, painstakingly contributed to the ongoing restoration of the edicule. The careful analysis of these fragments not only facilitated their chronological determination, but also paid tribute to the expertise and commitment of those involved in the perpetual preservation of the edicule. Unraveling the enigma of Jesus today, the tomb receives countless daily visits from pilgrims worldwide and is overseen by clergy from diverse Christian denominations, adhering to stringent regulations dating back to the Ottoman era. Apart from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, six other locations in Jerusalem are purportedly linked to Jesus' original burial site. However, identifying the true location remains elusive. One such contender is the Talpiot family tomb, situated approximately five kilometers south of Jerusalem's old city. Discovered in 1980, it garnered widespread attention following the 2007 Discovery Channel documentary, The Lost Tomb of Jesus, produced by James Cameron and directed by another contender, the Tomb of the Virgin Mary, nestled in the Kidron Valley, is traditionally associated with the burial of Jesus' mother. Pilgrims and visitors are drawn to this site, believing it holds significance in Christian history, despite limited historical evidence corroborating its ties to Mary. The allure of this tomb stems from the reverence for Mary and the narratives passed down through Christian tradition. Joseph of Arimathea, a figure prominently mentioned in the New Testament, is renowned for offering his tomb for the burial of Jesus. However, the precise location of Joseph's tomb varies across different beliefs. Some assert it lies in the Kidron Valley, while others suggest alternative sites. These divergent claims contribute to the enigma surrounding the quest to pinpoint where Joseph was interred following his pivotal role in the burial of Jesus. Both tombs are steeped in religious devotion and historical significance, providing believers with an opportunity for spiritual connection as they explore them. The narratives associated with these sites are intricately interwoven into the broader tapestry of the Christian faith, beckoning both pilgrims and historians to delve into the stories handed down through generations. The pursuit of the exact location of Jesus' burial site continues to captivate those intrigued by both the historical and spiritual dimensions of the event. In 2017, a team of experts embarked on an ambitious endeavor to restore the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, a site revered by Christians as the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection place of Jesus. The church boasts a complex history, having undergone numerous renovations and modifications over the centuries, rendering it a subject of fascination for historians, archaeologists, and believers alike. The primary objective of the restoration project was to fortify the Edicule, a small shrine housing Jesus' tomb within the church. 
the Edicule itself has undergone multiple repairs and renovations since its construction in the early 19th century. With time, the structure began to display signs of deterioration, including cracks in its marble walls and instability in its foundation. In a bid to ensure the preservation of this sacred site, experts meticulously devised and executed a restoration plan. As they labored to reinforce the edicule, the team of specialists made an unexpected and remarkable discovery. As the team delicately removed the marble covering from the inner chamber of the tomb, they stumbled upon a previously sealed compartment nestled within the tomb itself. This concealed chamber, untouched and forgotten for centuries, emerged into the light of discovery, stunning the archaeological community and introducing a fresh layer of intrigue to the history of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It appeared that the sealing of the chamber had occurred during a renovation of the Edicule in 1555, a detail that had faded from memory over time. Although devoid of human remains or notable artifacts, the newly revealed chamber underscored the ever-evolving nature of the church and the hidden strata of history concealed beneath its revered walls. Archaeologists and historians swiftly recognized the significance of this revelation, underscoring the ongoing endeavor to unravel the enigmatic facets surrounding the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a site steeped in centuries of religious reverence and historical transformations. The purpose and significance of the sealed chamber ignited scholarly discourse, paving the way for fresh avenues of research and exploration within this sacred precinct. The unveiling of the concealed chamber marked a truly remarkable event intertwined with the annals of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre's history. It served as a poignant reminder that even within one of the most venerable and extensively studied locales globally, mysteries yet lay in wait for discovery. This unforeseen revelation reignited curiosity in the Church's past and reignited the ongoing endeavor to unravel its intricate historical tapestry. Beyond the captivating revelations within the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the quest for Jesus' burial site has extended beyond the confines of Jerusalem. In the town of Talpiot, just south of the city, lies the Talpiot tomb which has garnered significant attention in recent years. Discovered in 1980, this tomb complex contained 10 ossuaries, two of which have sparked considerable debate and controversy. One ossuary bears the inscription, Yeshua bar Yehosef, translating to Jesus, son of Joseph, while the other showcases, Mariamene Emara, interpreted as Mary, known as the Master. Some propose that this tomb could be the final resting place of Jesus, Mary, and possibly other family members. However, scholars engage in fervent debate regarding the authenticity and significance of these inscriptions. Critics highlight that names such as Yeshua or Jesus and Mariamani or Mary were commonplace during that era, rendering such combinations statistically probable. Moreover, the interpretation of Mariamene Amara as Mary, known as the Master, remains subject to various conjectures. Despite the contentious nature of the debate, the Talpiot tomb remains a subject of inquiry in the realm of biblical archaeology. While its direct connection to Jesus' burial remains unconfirmed, it contributes to the ongoing exploration of the historical and archaeological facets of Jesus' life and demise. The pursuit of unraveling the mysteries surrounding his final resting place persists, captivating the interests of scholars and believers alike. What are your thoughts on the discovery of the tomb attributed to Jesus? Share your perspectives in the comments below.